Menstruation continues to be clouded by shame, discrimination and a lack of awareness. Imagine growing up in an environment where menstruation is shrouded in secrecy, leading to a cycle of misinformation and lack of reliable knowledge. Shockingly, studies reveal that 7 out of 10 mothers are unaware of the science behind periods or proper sanitary products to use. Consequently, they struggle to provide the necessary support to their daughters. A UNICEF study states that 71% of adolescent girls in India remain unaware of menstruation until they get their first period. And when they do, 1 in 5 girls drop out of school. Addressing this problem, Whisper, a leading menstrual hygiene brand, has launched the Keep Girls in School campaign to raise awareness around period education and help break the stigma to ensure young girls stay in school. On the occasion of World Menstrual Hygiene Day, we at News 18 Network, together with Whisper, invite you to join Whisper Keep Girls in School campaign to help end the silence, to renew our learnings and understanding, to make periods drawing room conversation and to engage and change negative social norms around menstrual health and hygiene. Today we have with us Mr. Girish Kalyanu Raman, Vice President and Country Leader, Feminine Care and Brand Operations PNG India and Arun Gupta, Founder, Managing Trustee, President, Pinkish Foundation. My first question to you Girish uh, is menstrual education how important it is and how does it relate to high rate of girls dropping out of school? Shivani, first of all, thanks a lot for having me and it's uh, my privilege to be a part of this conversation and, and talking about this important topic on the occasion of uh, World Menstrual Hygiene Day. Right from women being considered impure and dirty during the periods, restricted from doing things, restricted from visiting places, dropping out of school, menstruation and the lack of the right education continues to impact girls and women at large. The impact on education is one that is affecting their future and requires urgent intervention at multiple levels for us. Like reports indicate for us that one in five girls drop out of school after they get their periods. First, they start by missing a few days of school every month uh, as they do not have the right period protection. And this missing school uh, uh, a few days every month eventually leads to them falling behind in their studies and dropping out of school uh, altogether. Okay, uh, over to you Arun, government has approved more than 197 crore for the year 22-23 to states for implementing menstrual hygiene policies. Uh, you know, we have seen in the past, at least uh, there is some amount of improvement, you know, when it comes to the urban uh, places. But uh, what does it take and how will this dialogue around menstruation so urgent and uh, what does it take and how will it help in the coming uh, years? I think from the times when the first two people came on uh, the earth, 50% of the population was shrouded in period poverty or uh, period shame or stigma around it. The whole period movement started some around 10 years back and we have done remarkable work. Long distance has been covered and I think uh, uh, the government, uh, corporates like uh, PNG, a lot of NGOs, uh, the educational institutes have been playing a role and that needs to now kind of just grow up and the whole target is by the 2030 if we can normalize periods completely and end period poverty that will be a great step that we will uh, take and a great outcome that will reach. Okay, over to you Girish uh, uh, and you gave us a phrase period poverty, what will it take to uh, you know end this period poverty and what kind of role will uh, educating uh, or education around menstruation play in this uh, space? No, I think this is fundamentally the reason for existence of the Whisper brand for us, right? Whisper India's mission is to provide the right period education and products to girls and women in India to enable them to not have to not just have the utmost menstrual health and hygiene, but also to be able to lead everyday lives without any impact. Uh, we've been doing this for many, many years. In India, and we've seen, like I think Arun said, a huge uh, improvement on the understanding and the outcomes over the past 20, 25 years that we've been doing this in India. But we know that there is a long, long way to go. Uh, so far, Whisper has helped about 100 million plus girls in the country in school by providing uh, them with menstrual education and access to free pads. Right? The Keep Girl in School campaign has been working towards um, building awareness on girls dropping out of school when they hit puberty and Whisper believes that awareness and acceptance of hygienic practices can play a big role 
to achieving 100% menstrual hygiene. And one challenge that was always recorded was the missing chapter on menstrual education across the country. The missing chapter here could empower girls to know more about periods, manage them better, and encourage them to not look at it as taboo. And therefore, helping girls be unstoppable even during their period days, which is what we are all looking to achieve. How does this access or uh, lack of access to menstrual products uh, impact uh, education? No, absolutely, Shibani. I think uh, the stat that you point out is absolutely the real stat, which is that today one out of five girls drop out of school when they hit puberty. And it's, it's natural that it's going to impact the development of the nation and the economy in a big way, isn't it? Uh, not just that, but their own health is is the other important factor as well because of the use of today the uh, the the, of the unhygienic elements like hay or cloth or rags that that women and girls use today are exposed to a risk of a lot of diseases which can be curbed as well by imparting the right education and knowledge about menstrual hygiene and health. So we were the first brand to show sanitary napkins on television and mentioned the word periods in advertising way back in the day. So we continue to do this work. We realize that there is a lot more to do and we're just starting off on the journey. We've had recent campaigns which are hashtag sit improper and we've had you know, hashtag Mary life Mary rules where we've encouraged consumers to break period taboos and share their personal anecdotes uh, about these taboos. Over time, each of these efforts done year on year sustainably is going to help normalize periods as it, as it should be, right? I loved how you said that periods should be a drawing room conversation. So that's what we are all moving towards. Uh, on that note, Arun, what roles do schools uh, play in imparting menstrual education? Of course, schools have a very important role. See, schools provide us that concrete institutional platform uh, where we have all the girls available and we can very easily kind of go to them and through them we can educate the girls on menstrual hygiene and health and the need and the various menstrual products and the choices that are available to them. Compared to the other kind of communities that we serve, uh, it's, it's more consistent, it's more easy to go, it's repeatable. And we can also build the capacity of the teacher. So if you want to make it sustainable, because every day there are new girls who are hitting menarche, that is their first period, right? And they need to be educated before they get their first period so that they're saved from the shock and the trauma when they see blood oozing out of the body for the first time and they get completely confused. And school provides us that necessary infrastructure and they can, they can be that fulcrum through which we can also educate mothers and the communities and the boys around, right? And the school can become a fulcrum where the teachers can invite the parents also and to educate them, to train them, to make them aware, uh, to, to, to make them aware that they need to kind of educate their daughters. So if you educate the mothers, they will be able to educate the, the, the students and that uh, infrastructure is provided by the schools. We spoke about the access uh, to menstrual uh, hygiene products. So what according to you is holding back this pen penetration of menstrual hygiene products in semi-urban markets and rural markets? See, overall, uh, we have this huge taboos and, and lack of awareness, first of all, uh, which has been shrouding the whole uh, uh, atmosphere and the country, country landscape. And the fact of the matter is that education is not there. So people do not even realize. There are people still who do not realize that there is something called a sanitary pad, which is a healthy option, and they can utilize that. right? And that information and inf uh, needs to pass on. Right, the government and all the different stakeholders, we all the NGOs, the, the corporates like uh, PNG, because they are somewhere I see them also as a social organization. Right, we all need to work together to bring that access and quality products. So, we take quality products to the last girl in the last remote place so that they have that product available. There needs to be more awareness, more investment in this regard. Right, uh, and, and that will be the first few steps to be kind of doing that larger campaigns, uh, because because we need to break that silence around the whole stigma. We need to challenge the stigmas attached to menstruation, and that will slowly and slowly the rural areas will start adopting uh, the healthier uh, period products. On this note, we slip into a short break. Stay with us. We will be right back on Whisper. Keep girls in school in association with News 18 Network. Welcome back. 
to whisper keep girls in school in association with news 18 network and we continue with the question of what needs to be done to increase awareness around menstrual health and hygiene Girish, uh, in your Keep Girls in School movement that uh, you know you have initiated, your brand has released a new film, uh, The Missing Chapter for Mothers. If you can share with us, uh, you know, the idea first, the idea behind the campaign and what roles do uh, mothers play and their understanding of, you know, how this uh, female body during menstruation works. Yeah. Keep Girls in School for us is, uh, is the brand philosophy and it's the vision to drive menstrual education and products to every girl uh, and woman in, in India. And Whisper is, has not been just a woman's ally in fighting the myths and prejudices, but also been an advocate in offering period education to mothers and girls. One of the first teachers of a girl is really her mother, right? When a girl gets a period for the first time, the go-to person is really the mother, uh, who's, a, who's a person that she first reaches out to. But reports say today that seven out of 10 moms do not fully understand the biology behind periods and still continue to find it dirty or impure. Right, that is the insight that sparked this edition of our Keep Girls in School campaign. And the fourth film titled The Missing Chapter for Moms attempts to educate mothers about the biology behind periods so that they in turn can then break the cycle and bring up aware and informed daughters <laughs> who don't miss school uh, during periods. On that note, Girish, I want to ask you, how do you ensure that mothers have access to all, uh, uh, you know, the information and resources that they need to, uh, like, educate their family and their communities around them? We believe that an educated mother in turn will educate the daughter about the science behind periods, break free from the societal taboos around this topic, and enable her daughter to complete her education. And that's what we want to do with our campaign. Uh, where we've not refrained actually from openly describing the how and why of periods, right? If you see our film, it actually talks very openly about how periods are, you know, how periods happen and, and what, what the biology is all about. So we want that right education to be imparted and to be spread and shared. And we encourage all our partners and everybody who works with us to share that awareness and spread it to reach more uh, people in the country. Also at our on-ground menstrual education programs that we run with thousands and thousands of schools in the country, we not only have young girls in attendance, but we also invite mothers uh, to come to the program to sort of take the same learnings and they've never learned this chapter on periods in their school when, when they were young. So we invite also moms and we see that actually drive a lot of conversation, a lot of positivity around the topic and drives a lot of clarity around the topic, which is much, much needed for us. Uh, Arun, over to you, how are you and Pinkish Foundation reaching out to girls in uh, slums and girls, young girls and also mothers in slums and rural areas? Right. So surely when we started, we formed Pinkish. The idea was to kind of be able to create a very large nationwide impact. But we were sitting in Delhi and how to do that. What we did was we created a group on Facebook where we started uh, inviting mothers to join across the board. Right. And over six months, we added some 200,000 uh, uh, moms and and ordinary homemakers and and basically we had conversations with them we motivated them and a lot of them hundreds of them became our volunteers and wherever they are located uh, whether be it in Kashmir down south in Sikkim and we have people in places where uh, which are not on Google Maps also we educate them we enable them we build their capacities we provide them learning materials and they go to their nearby slums rural areas rural schools go there on a regular basis conduct awareness sessions there right and uh, I would I would really take this opportunity to also thank PNG because uh, they have been kind of helping us with uh, uh, a lot of pads that we kind of asked them uh, last year we did uh, uh, in Beirut uh, an event where on a single day uh, through some 500 schools we trained 40,000 girls what are the on-ground challenges? What are the challenges uh, that you face, uh, you know, when you go and meet and interact with these mothers and young girls? And what is the roadmap? What needs to be done uh, to break these taboos and myths and, you know, overall increase awareness around the menstrual hygiene uh, management? 
as you rightly said first of all because these taboos and stigmas are very deep built very deep rooted in our society over a long period of time and it's of course taking time the fourth most thing is more and more education and more and more campaign and i think uh, it needs all stakeholders and all partners like the government bodies both at the central and the state level uh, companies like png uh, educational institutes student bodies a lot of ngos to all come together pool in their resources work in partnership models right uh, and be able to kind of reach out at different places at this place i would say uh, the corporates have a large role to play here uh, right we have a, a csr budget of some 25000 crores it is increasing every day and a lot of these corporates and when we reach out to them uh, they do not have menstrual hygiene as a, uh, as a as a core area that they are working on they are not aware of that and and through this program also i request corporates to kind of understand the importance of that allocate some csr budget if they even do it 5% or 10% we are talking of 1000 to 2000 crores every year which will go a long way in 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 kind of promoting these educational campaigns in taking these products uh, and quality products that is something that we need to ensure to the last mile at the grassroots level be able to kind of deliver them right uh okay uh, over to you girish uh, you know coming back to the missing chapter to help mothers bridge the need gap uh, i wanted to understand any insights that you have gained uh, you know around the same uh, issue uh, that we spoke just now if you can share those insights uh, with us and uh, you know roadmap also arun mentioned a few things uh, if you can share uh, your thoughts on uh, the roadmap forward No, I think the road ahead is a really, really long one. Uh, we've actually come a long way, like I think both Arun and I have said. But I think there is so much a uh, road to cover in terms of education and awareness that we need to spread. At Whisper, we believe that nothing should come in the way of women or girls achieving their dreams. And I think the specific uh, uh, route that we've chosen is education, right? So we believe missed school equals missed opportunity, and creating awareness and acceptance. for hygienic menstrual practices can play a huge role in changing this scenario uh, from 1995 we introduced our period education program to educate girls from 1995 until date we've educated more than 100 million girls on menstrual hygiene and also provided them with free pads right the what we want to do going forward is we realize that the impact of this missing chapter in the indian education system on menstrual hygiene is a significant one which is why we are now working towards increasing awareness about the inclusion of period sensitization in india we are actually working with unesco the premier expert on education and related policies to create a multi module period curriculum to be proposed to incorporate across education systems in the country and that's kind of what our intent is which is to bring back the missing chapter in every way we possibly can Yeah, and Arun, uh, over to you. In April, Supreme Court said that a uniform national policy may be framed by the centre uh, in consultation with the states and the union territories to ensure menstrual hygiene. Uh, you know, uh, products are available by providing uh, sanitary pads and vending machines and disposal mechanism exclusively for washrooms uh, for all uh, you know girl students in school. a welcome uh, step uh, sort of uh, what are your thoughts and what is the kind of impact that this will have in the coming months or coming years so definitely a very welcome step but again as i think girish said there's a long way ahead uh, and and uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done so of course taking healthy period products to the last mile is very critical to every single girl uh, uh, education is very important uh, uh, creating that infrastructure where waste disposal is done in the right way is also very critical because that's also somewhere limiting uh, the fact that if the proper waste disposal is not there and if we take uh, more and more products uh, it becomes difficult so 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 it's a great step in the right direction but then as i said more in Investment, right focus, uh, all all partners working toward a common cause. That is essential to be able to kind of do that. Uh, uh, somewhere we need to change the narrative and create a narrative where we are able to celebrate periods. Right, it's a very major milestone in a young girl's life where she's metamorphosing from a young girl to a woman. Right, uh, it's a very very critical stage, and the whole world uh, is kind of based on that normal natural process. 
process and we must all appreciate the beauty of it and it starts within the family at one level starts at the national level we we create uh, 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 programs and policies to kind of sustain that uh, evolve those build those and together uh, they can kind of completely change the landscape which we essentially need to uh, and and we must all work towards that in the in a, in, a, in a unified approach yeah what a beautiful thought arun uh, final words from you girish uh, what are the kind of outreach programs that we expect from png in the coming months in this direction i think uh, uh, you know we have uh, we we very very clearly realize that uh, we need to continue to doing what we are doing um, like i said we've been on a journey for 25 years and we have educated more than 100 million plus girls um, we see this working really really well to change how menstruation is perceived and and improving period education and outcomes so i think what we continue to do is both those things which is continue our on ground efforts on driving education and then also drive a broader awareness why are what we are doing with keep girls in school which is to drive broader awareness and wider reach of the message around the fact that menstruation is a normal biological process and our intent is to bring back that missing chapter like i said in every possible way thank you so much for those valuable insights i hope together we help break the stigma and misinformation around menstruation and keep our girls in school read learn and share the missing chapter on periods thank you so much